Hey everybody and welcome to the start of a very exciting project for me. This is Northern Lion Plays Grifflands and it's sponsored by Clay. You may know Clay amongst their most well-known uh, developed games. Uh, Grifflands, which we're going to be playing right here, which is currently in alpha and in the video description. You can check out uh, a link to pick that up on the Epic Game Store right now if you're interested. Um, they also made Don't Starve, Don't Starve Together, Shank, Shank 2, Invisible Ink, Oxygen Not Included. I think that's that might be all of them. I think I've played every clay game that's ever existed, uh, including Grifflands, and this is a, a, a very interesting bit of kismet or destiny. Grifflands was actually the first episode of Northern Lion Tries we ever did, back in late November of uh, 2019. So sometimes the thing with Northern Lion Tries, and why this is such a great project, is because I play the game, I get just about to the point where I go, hey, that's interesting, and then I'm like, ah, I'm on to the next game tomorrow, but this opportunity came up to play a little bit more Grifflands. Um, while it's still in alpha, and kind of the impetus for it is that uh, the second character in the game, Rook, he's getting an update uh, within the next week that allows you to fully play through all four days of his campaign. So we'll see if we can get to that at some point. Um, but yes, this is a sponsored series, so I hope you guys enjoy these over the course of the next week. I'm going to refresh your memory very quickly about what's going on with Grifflands. It is a deck builder, but it's a little bit more uh, wrapped in an RPG envelope, a narrative envelope, if you will, than games that are purely mechanics-driven, like Slay the Spire, for example. Um, and kind of the, the central conceit of the game that, that separates it from other deck builders is that there's two different decks that you build constantly. Um, one of them is the negotiation deck, and one of them is the battle deck. So the negotiation deck, as you can see here, it, they, they function very similarly, but they, they work on kind of a different concept of uh, whether you're attacking or breaking down someone's resolve by persuading them. Uh, and they can have diplomatic consequences, whichever one you choose to do over the course of the game. Um, so there's kind of like a butterfly effect there. So you draw five cards every turn for your negotiation deck. You got to destroy your opponent's resolve, which we'll call blue HP for lack of a better word. You can see what they're going to do here. As you can see, he's about to do an ad hominem uh, talk very quickly and hope he overwhelms me uh, technique, which I am immune to because uh, I've spent a lot of time arguing on the internet. And uh, we can also attack those arguments individually, as you can see. And then battle functions very similarly, except we're doing damage or building up like physical defense instead. Um, the other thing here that's worth noting, I had to remind myself of, is that you can get enemies to yield... Uh, like NPCs in Chivalry Medieval Warfare. What you gotta do is get their HP down to the breaking point, but don't kill them. And then they'll surrender, and you can choose, I think, whether to keep them alive or not. Um, and whether you kill an enemy or, or keep them alive, which of course might have consequences when it comes to your own opportunities, like you might take damage maybe, waiting a turn to keep an enemy alive. Um, but this, it might come back to help you or maybe to haunt you as well. Uh, and of course you can see what enemies are going to do before their turn. But anyway, let's get started here. So we are going to play as... Well, we are not going to play as Rook, because he's presently locked. <laughs> Instead, we're going to play as Saul. Which, um, we're going to start a new run on that. We we did uh, one run back with the, when we did the Northern Lion Tries. And let's just take a look at what we've got here in our negotiation deck. I told you! Talk quickly! It wasn't just a joke. We can apply three Composure. We can insert inspiration or attitude into our hand. We can also threaten. We can point our finger. And, uh convince them and then of course we've got stabs and we've got fight dirties and we got uh you know do a faint tear and we got an elbow strike let's get started i'm eager to get going on this one again a challenge you enter the grogendal shrugging off the weird sense of deja vu that hits you first thing is to find your old friend fish who might have a lead on where to find cashio mm, but what about his henchman uh Walla Nut, and of course his left-hand man, Almond. The grog and dog has its charm. The patrons look lively, and the floorboards floor creak like a well-fed toad. There you are. I started to think you might have gotten mugged before you even made it through the door. Your faith moves me, fish, but I do feel ready for a fight, like my blood is pumping, you know? Should serve me well up against Casho. First breath of fresh air in 10 years and you get straight to the point. But you won't get nowhere without making some friends. Get your bearings and maybe tomorrow we could talk about Casho. Let me give you something. People leave the darndest things behind in the bar. Okay. She will give us something new every time we start over. 50 money? 
upgrade a negotiation card or get some healing vapors honestly so last time we went a little bit more on the classic like sword and board for lack of a better word we went attack and defense and tried to solve everything by hitting enemies because for me with such a smooth brain that seems like the most appropriate technique you know is to take the opportunity to just uh hit and then block it seems a little bit easier to conceptualize this time, my brain has expanded quite massively over the course of the previous year, as you've watched. I think it's time for us to deal with advanced level techniques like using negotiation cards. Swing people to your side and you might just have a chance. Okay. So let me think. My, my agnostic card uh, evaluation skills are not necessarily particularly amazing. Um, composure reduces our resolve loss. I believe that this does direct resolve damage. This, I believe, does direct resolve damage. Um, and then inspiration gives you influence or dominance with attitude. Influence. All diplomacy cards deal maximum damage. Okay, so if we go this route, we would get inspiration cards. The inspiration cards would make our green cards do maximum damage. Whereas if we go... Um, with attitude, or dominance, I should say, hostility cards do more damage, but reduce by one at the start of your turn. Oh, they both reduce by one, right? Maybe not, actually. Influence is an argument. Okay, so I know you're like, what are you talking about? So if we go dominance, it ticks down over time, so we get a combat buff, for lack of a better word, that over a certain number of turns will degrade, whereas influence is actually, it becomes like an orbital, and it can take damage itself, so it can be destroyed by the enemy, but maybe that would be good as well, because it would absorb some aggression of its own. So let's, um, I mean, I like the idea to improvise a card as well, choose cards from a random pool to put in your hand, but that's a little maybe advanced for me. Let's upgrade Sal's instincts, and uh, we'll go with diplomatic instincts here. So instead of either of these, we'll, we'll force it to go diplomatic. Um, insert flatter, compliment, or attitude into your hand. Why not? All right. And then we will pick a job. Um, get work from fish, please. I got people in my pocket who owe me a favor. Uni, Enit, Kuga, they're easy people to find. Tell them I sent you, and they can settle their tabs by giving you work. Get that done, and I'll get you a plate of popped Ashnu eyes on the house. Bless your warty hide, fish. I'll hold you to that. Okay. I like how there, there's almost like a built-in um, tooltip for everything here. Ashnu, a domesticated giant snail. I was just, because uh, these are going to be who we choose to do the, uh, the missions with. We probably want to speak to the clerk, would be my guess. That seems more diplomatically oriented. Sometimes we might be forced into battle, by the way, but let's see. Ice cold. Kuga is offering a reward for hunting down a thief. Focus is combat and negotiation. Repo person, focus is negotiation, focus is combat. Okay, so we'll definitely go for the negotiation focus. And this is worth talking about. This is really um, amongst the, or alongside, I should say, the fact that there's a combat and a negotiation technique and also the, the RPG mechanics. The fact that, um, you know, you have your, your choices here and it's not really like a persistent world in the sense that you're going to play one campaign for like 40 or 60 hours and things will change. But the choices you make here in comparison to the choices you would make in other deck builders actually have more uh, impact on what happens in the game. Uh, because it's not so merely mechanically driven by the deck, you know, there's also the story in the world outside of that. So we will get a removal and a starting bonus. Pick a card to help on the quest. All right. We'll also get 60 shills. We've been going long enough here without having any combat. Or without having any... Hey, sorry, dialogue. Dialogue is what I meant to say. Without having any dialogue, of course. So you are the person with the quest. I was just wondering if maybe if we talk to you, we could also get some other advantages. But let's, let's just start here. This is supposed to be a relatively easy one. Enid's success as a smuggler is nevertheless earned in spite of her being known to skim a little off the top of whatever it is she's smuggling. And Ganadiko to you as well, Enid. Um, we will have an opportunity here. I'm offering my arm for pay. It slices, it dices, you won't find a better offer, I tell you. Maybe just a firm handshake will do the trick. To maintain social distancing, maybe just a polite nod instead. I've got a client who hired my business partner and I to acquire some goods legally. I'm detecting a lot of euphemisms. Well, my business partner took off with funds. With the funds. I hope he just went to get the goods like he was supposed to, but I haven't seen him in days and the client is breathing blisters onto my neck. I need you to confront Veep. 
a civilian laborer. Find out what the holdup is, hopefully it's a quick fix, and ask them what the heck happened in the series finale. Yeah, call on it now. It's not. Just find Veep, get the goods, then deliver them to our client. I'll pay you extra just to make sure this all gets smoothed over, okay? All right. Works for me. I accept the quest. And we want negotiation cards. Draw three cards. I, I recognize in myself that I always underrate draw. So this might be useful. Gain two influence and apply three composure to it. Okay, so three composure will reduce our resolve loss, so our influence will be very hard to degrade by the enemy. Swift rebuttal. Improvise a zero cost card from your discard pile. Now I just wanna I wanna look at my negotiation deck. Do I have zero cost cards? Yes, in theory, compliment and flatter could both be zero cost card or attitude for that matter, I guess. You know what? I kind of like the idea of, of going with Swifter Bottle here. Let's give that a try. We'll build a synergy early and see how it works. I'm glad you showed up. All right, let me out and let's continue on our quest here. That won't be necessary. We don't need to go back to the bar just yet. Someone dressed an awful lot like a shopkeeper stops you in your tracks. She pulls a knife out of the front pocket of her work apron and waves it like a bundle of burning sage. All right, sludge sucker, hand over all you got. I will not. Don't make me use this. Okay. Um, let's look at this. Battle seems scary. Hand over all your money. I'd rather not. Ask about Shell or scare her away. This is an intimidation attempt. Let, let's start by maybe we can just use dialogue. Like, for example, ask about Shell. Is this a holdup? Yes. Really? I got a knife, don't I? We're alone in the wilderness, ain't we? What's so hard to get? Well, it's just that I'm a well-equipped bounty hunter and you're... I'm your worst nightmare. Don't doubt that for a second. Yeah, sure. What if I offer you a job? I shouldn't have told you my name. Right, well, you did, so I don't want to fight you. But how about a job? I could pay you for protection? Protection, eh? I don't blame you. It's a scary world out there. I won't do it for less than 50 shills. You know what? I don't even know if we can use allies during negotiation, but 50 shells to not have it on my conscience that we're about to kill this nice young lady? Sure, welcome. You drive a hard bargain, but here you go. Wow, this is great. And if we ever have to get into physical combat, this will be worth it then. Or could be worth it at least. At the very least, she'll soak up some hits for us. Okay, Shell swishes her knife through the air, cutting down some conjured up ruffian. Fair enough. Never hurts to have, uh, you know, more friends, I guess. I get by with a little help from my friends. Just just taking a look at this first. Because maybe by talking to these guys, we can um, make it easier to handle Veep or something like that. So probably I'd like to speak to the guard first. It's easy to feel sorry for someone with a face like Grex's. At least Grex thinks it should be. Hail to Gaft. Pay Grex to help you. I'm sorry, I, I cannot afford that. Goodbye. How about you, Yibbit? Uh, pay Yibbit to look the other way. Pay Yibbit to help you. I'm sorry, we will not. When you need the fastest pencil pusher in the West, you need Uni. All right, so all, all these NPCs, we can just pay them to help us out here. Um, instead, we'll handle this our own. By the calluses on his hand and the heavy sigh on his lips, you're toxic, I'm slipping up. It's clear Veep has been worked to the bone. I ask Veep about the money. You Veep? And it sent me. Wants to know where her money got to. Also, what's Julia Louis Dreyfus like in person? Ah, Hesh. Look, the fact is, I might have dipped into the money to pay off some debts. I had no choice. My debt collector was going to kill me. But now I guess the client's going to kill me and eat it both if we don't deliver, huh? So I, I don't believe I can settle your debt. I propose to betray Enid for a share of the money. I, I don't want to do that either, nor do I really want to uh, fight you, to be honest, although I think that we would probably be fine. What if I offer to settle your debt? You're dead if you can't pay those debts back, so I'll reimburse Orug for you. Really? You'd do that for Enid and me? Thank you. Yeah, your sob story worked, but don't screw up again, all right? You clearly can't afford the consequences. Well, this will be a problem because we cannot pay Orug. <laughs> but maybe by using our negotiation we can not be killed here that would be a nice start at least considering this is episode one and we're 15 minutes in as you arrive you see orug in a heated debate with enid and veep and who are you did you also get cheated by these two idiots i'm a hunter 
And like it or not, I have answers for you. Blame everything on Enid or blame everything on Veep. I mean, I have to be honest. To me, this is, this is still Veep's problem. I know this is like I'm triple-crossing him now, but I didn't know what options were going to be available. Things were going according to plan until Veep dropped the ball. Seems only fair he should be the one to pay the price. What? No, Enid's the one in charge. I'm just a nobody. Oh, really? Good. So killing you won't burn any important bridges. I'll take this blood price, Enid. You and your grifter friend are free to go, but don't screw me again, you understand? Enid dislikes you! Enid doesn't look happy with this turn of events, but she's smart enough to keep her mouth shut about it as you both make for the door. Veep hates you. You've incurred his fury and likely will face the consequences. But we did get 60 shills. Few citizens that meet you for the first time will dislike you. I'm sorry. Um, quest bonus, remove a card. Let's remove a negotiation card. And we're going to cut, like, Threaden out of here. Because I don't think that we want to go um, aggression path. Shell pulls you aside. It's been a blast, but I have to get going now. Being, be seeing you? What the heck, dude? I, I, I failed miserably. I accomplished nothing. Well, look who it is. All right. Take, take me back. Take me back to another quest. This is... That was a disaster. Okay, let's, let's do some more quests. We, we got to get into some actual combat here. Or, or negotiation. So let, let's start with this. Early retirement, focus, negotiation. I know you might be saying NL. Why wouldn't you go with focus... Or uh, quest available back channel negotiations? Well, you know what? You might be right. This one is just negotiation. This one's combat and negotiation. But I'm going to go for combat and negotiation. Maybe we can get a little smattering of both. And I'm not going to be so cute about it anymore. You know, in the future, I'm actually going to... Uh, I'm just going to engage people, I think. Because my best intentions of mice or men have just made God laugh. What Rudana has sacrificed in scruples, he's made up for in passive aggression. Didn't think my day would involve a grifter dealing. You want to make some money? I've got a great opportunity, but there's a hitch. I need a partner in the spree to pull it off. Pretty sure you're not su you're supposed to arrest the spree, not work with them. Exactly. I need some insulation from blowback if I'm going to make this work. So how about you be my proxy? Go talk to Lux and convince her this is a good deal. She shouldn't refuse. I will. I will. Tactical mind. Draw one extra card at the start of your turn, but expend... That seems interesting. I mean, in Slay the Spire terms, that's a good deal. One mana to draw one extra card every single turn. Uh-oh. We, we've hit a random encounter. A high-pitched whine from somewhere nearby. Looking around, you spot a lone coyote pup struggling in the clotted black mud. Rescue the coyote pup. Untrained pets help you in combat but are a disadvantage in negotiations. Sorry, buddy. Ignore the whining pup. Once its back is turned, your, the yote pup gives a last panicked yelp. Go back and save the dang pup or abandon the pup to its fate. All right, I'm going back to save it. I lost 9 HP and you're going to be a disadvantage in negotiations, but I just, I just can't do it, okay? Let's ignore the fact the blowback in the comments would be very poor. But on top of that... I couldn't live with myself. I, I'm becoming a softie in old age. You approach the bandit's meager camp. She doesn't look too concerned as you approach. Do us both a favor and stay where you are. What do you want? I would like to present Rudana's offer. I've been sent to recruit you for an enticing venture. It's secretive but profitable. Don't be cute, Hunter. What's the job? All right, all right. I'll give it to you straight. Here we go. Leash that thing. So what, let, let's look at what um, the pet actually disadvantages us with. You can see everything here, by the way. Nothing's being blocked at present. I can always make my camera a little smaller. Yo. Okay, so the dog actually does damage to me every turn. Good to know. But we can, we can ice it. And then you are going to... You have a short fuse. Reduce your opponent's core argument resolve to zero to win the negotiation. But short fuse is a built-in uh, effect, I think. Increase all damage by one. Increase by one whenever you dismiss one of Lux's arguments. Okay, so if I do damage to her arguments, she will be upset with me. 
I believe. And like, she'll get stronger. Yeah. So we want to go for her direct damage, I think. But I also kind of want to remove the pet debuff first. So we're just thinking here temporarily. So here's what I'm thinking. We want to gain as much influence as possible early. So... We want to play a zero-cost card first. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to play Diplomatic Instincts. We are then going to insert... A compliment into our hand. Gain two influence, then deal damage equal to half your influence to a random opponent argument. See, that's not great. However, it's a zero cost card. And we did damage the dog, which is good for us. Because it's not it's the psychological damage. Then we can play Swift Rebuttal, which does four damage and also allows us to improvise a zero cost card from our discard pile, which we just created. So let's use a swift rebuttal on the dog just to get it out of there. I appreciate that a great deal. Excuse me, where is my improvised card? Maybe, uh, did I, hold on. Is there a log? I might have made a mistake. It's possible that when we played this, um, it actually was expended. I, I think that's probably the most likely outcome. Improvise a card from a pool of special cards? That won't be necessary. So we are going to take some damage, by the way. Um, and I don't think there's that much we can do about that. Although, instead of taking 5 damage, we could do this. And we could take... Uh, or Sorry, instead of taking 8 damage, if we destroy one of the opponent's arguments, we'll only take 5. Which probably seems most sensible to me. Although, can I not... I can't attack you because those are on the inner ring. Okay. So we'll just go straight for your resolve there. Just listen here. Alright, and that is the end of my turn, unfortunately. So you're gonna hit you're gonna hit me pretty bad there. But now you got no arguments. Oh, you got a an argument we don't know that's coming out in a, a future turn. It would be very nice to kill you this turn, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. I think that our play here is very simple. I think we get composure get composure all of a sudden we're taking no damage this turn and then we can do three to six damage to you directly or we could draw one every future turn and i think we should draw one every future turn although now i'm realizing this can be destroyed the reason i want that is just because it's more interesting to me sure we could go for some direct damage but you know where's the fun in that all right escalation increases count whenever a hostile card is played adds plus one damage to all intents a little spooky and that's doing seven damage all right so we want as much... Oh, our argument's being attacked. So for sure, we want to play this. And then I think we want to, again, get two influence. Which also destroyed our opponent's argument, which is very nice. And we have a current influence stack of four. But it's going to get destroyed next time. So we really just want to pile on as much damage as possible here. So let me let me hit you. And then we might as well try to kill you. If it hit for seven, it would have killed you. Or it Sorry, it would have persuaded you. My mistake. Oh, I didn't realize there was damage overrun on that too. Fair enough, fair enough. That's good to know. Um, so in this case, we will just end your life. All right, so we won, but we took way more damage than I think is appropriate. Let's see what we want to keep here. Honestly, I'm still, when I see a green card, I'm, I'm pretty stoked. Composure, again, gives us uh, more HP on our arguments. But I, I, I really like building that influence counter. Because I think what we're trying to do, if you're wondering, Hey, NL, explain to me what's going on with this deck right now. We've only used it once, admittedly, so I can understand your confusion. Um, I think what we're going to try to do is get our influence counter as high as possible by playing cards that, you know add to it that increment it and then we have a card that's like spend half of your influence to do that much damage to the enemy and do two damage to all arguments i think that's what we're looking for you better listen close so you can see why the officer wants to keep it quiet sounds like rudana has got more to lose than i do if this goes south you go tell rudana that i want to meet discreetly of course if he doesn't like that too bad he can find another stooge he won't like it but i'll pass it on okay let's go see what rudana's got going on Hello again. The deal is done. Whip-schmack with the spunky tail. 
She just wants a meeting to make it official. What? I hired you so I wouldn't have to meet her. But it is what it is, I guess. So let's go. Your job was to be my proxy, so I'll keep you proximate. You want to get paid, don't you? So let's go. Uh, let's go. I don't think we need to get more resolve just yet. Take Rudana to the ambush site and protect them during the meeting with Lux. So this is the place, huh? Where's Lux? The unnatural silence is your only warning of the ambush. How dare you? I beat you! I beat you and you've betrayed the, the terms of our engagement. That's alright. It's 3v2. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. We'll receive 3 damage from Wild Fleet. What do you got going on there? Your kindness, you gain 4 defense per turn. You will panic if you receive 12 damage. Now, all of the allies attack before the enemies attack. So, you're going to panic in 27 damage. It is possible, maybe, that we could just cause you to flee right away. I would like to take zero damage, I'll admit. Let me think about this, though. I'm just thinking about this for a second. Let's improvise a card. And what are wounds? Attacks inflict one bonus damage to this target at the start of the turn. Reduce wound by one. So this is something you might want to use if you're going to hit multiple times. Or maybe your allies are going to hit multiple times. We're only being hit for three, right? So I'll just take the free defense. Which, now that I think about it, we would have been way better off just playing faint. But that's okay. Clerk Rodana. Skittish. You're taking no damage. A status effect will be applied by this guy. That's your move? You're going to apply a status effect? To me or to the... I don't know. Anyway, let's not worry about it too much. <laughs> um, for me... I mean, I don't really want to attack you because you have... Your, your defense rebuilds, right? So, um, my current thinking is you take Sal's daggers and then you apply two bleed and two damage seems fairly appropriate and then we could do three guaranteed damage or we could do two to five we did two to five and it did three that seems appropriate and let's see okay so you're gonna you've applied a status effect we'll look at that in just a moment i'm unafraid what was your status effect power attack card damage is increased by two i've been weakened i think yeah attack damage by this target is reduced by 34 so who's getting attacked you're going to take 5 damage. You're applying a combat buff. Can I apply defense to the... I can! Okay. Well, my current mindset is let's just keep our uh, pet alive then. If we're not going to uh, take any damage ourselves. No, not much point in us doing, you know, bonus damage here. Because we kind of stink right now. We'll end our turn and pass it on. Good bites, brother. Good smacks. You have applied power to yourself. And our... Uh, untrained squawk kit has not taken any damage. Now my debuff is removed. Now you, you'll panic if you receive six more damage. It definitely seems plausible to me that we can get you to take six damage. Give me... Just give me the most damage on this. I think we want to do this. Like, we still have two mana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're not taking any damage. So we hit. And then we use Hammer Grip. Fine, you win. She has surrendered. Okay. And actually, I forgot that was zero cost. So we're actually doing totally fine here. So she's not doing anything next turn. You are kind of the problem. We want to do six damage to you. Or alternatively, we could just apply four defense to this guy. And what are you doing? What's your move? You're going to hit for... Oh, well, you guys are going to kill this thing. By all means. Or are you going to come close? Look at that. We win. <laughs> Execute. Kills target, surrendered enemy. I will not. I choose to accept your surrender. I'm a benevolent lord. Pick a battle card. Choose one of three battle cards. And restore. Winning a battle has restored four resolve. That's good because we lost more of it than I'd like to admit. And what battle card will be like? Draw a card. It costs zero until played. Discard up to two cards, gain one power for each card until the end of turn. I kind of like that, because we, we don't have enough mana to play all of our five cards anyway, so to build up for, like, one good attack seems pretty useful for now. Luck set us up. I knew I never should have trusted a spree. Still, you did the job, and I can't afford to burn any more bridges, so you'll still get paid. Finally. 
You get paid 55 shills. Quest bonus, restoration. We'll restore 10 resolve. Because I think it's easier for us to put up physical defense than psychological defense. And there's a metaphor for real life in there. So we're in the nighttime now. We have an active objective to talk to fish. We might play a little longer for episode one just because I feel bad that like the start of the episode did not go particularly well. I pretty much just got bodied immediately by trying to big brain my way through the quest. Fish greets you enthusiastically. Sal, I've lined up a great opportunity for you. Those two over there, they are night merchants. They sell rare goods you can't get nowhere else, and it just so happens they need your help. You can only be in one place at a time, but either will get you a leg up you sorely need, kid. Go tell them I sent you and ingratiate yourself. Just be warned, they're both persnickety so-and-sos. You're probably going to cheese off the one you don't pick. Okay. So we can pick... Uh, talk to one of the merchants. Oh, it's either Endo... Or Plaka the Swab. <laughs> I would rather do Lone Shark negotiations, hopefully. Plus, your design is cooler. Ask about the special job. Fish says you're looking for some hired muscle. Yes, you'll do. You just need to stand behind me and look intimidating. You can handle that, right? Depends. What's standing in front of you? Don't worry about that part. I accept the job. The details are fuzzy, but I'm in. Excellent, let's go. Endo dislikes you. Whatever, I don't need Endo, I got Plaka the Swab. And what about my needs? I'm just supposed to flounder? Fish said you were the best. I'm gonna remember this snub. Okay, uh, get over it, dude. That doesn't seem like good customer relations. You get one no, and you're like, uh, gonna be a big baby about it? Ridiculous. Plaka the Swab opens the door to a nondescript hovel and ushers you through. Say nothing, Saul, until I tell you to say something. I was just looking for you. The graft you sold me, it stopped working. Also, I am Groot. The graft I so graciously extended credit for you to buy, I disabled it when you fell behind on your payments again. I can pay, I have the money. It's too late for that, I'm losing money just taking the time to talk to you. I'm gonna need the graft back. But it's installed. They don't just come out unless you, unless you cut them out, but you can't make me do that. I wouldn't dream of asking you to do that yourself, which is why I brought my friend here. Sal, extract the grat from Gura, if you please. You know what? It's a spicy battle, but this is what we've built our negotiation deck to handle. What if we could convince the lone shark? Opponent has plus 20 resolve, bad for business. We gotta try. Surely you could give Gura another chance. Only does two damage. Okay, so what do you got? You got... I think this is worth a shot. And if we fail, we fail. You know? So we're taking six damage directly. Um, here's what I'm thinking. You start by gaining influence. Because we need that for the future. And it's got a little extra composure going along with it. We're still taking six... So personally, because resolve is important to me, I do think we want to apply at least some deflection to ourselves. What's what's your thing? Redu uh, steal a card from Saul and hold it hostage. Oh, steal a card, not an argument. Okay, who cares? Not that big of a deal. I don't mind taking a little damage. Um, I would very much like to get rid of the debuff that we have on our, our pet friend here, or from our pet friend here. It's fine. We knew that was going to happen. You've stolen fast talk. I gotta admit, you're a little spicy. All attacks deal one more damage. But when we kill it, it comes back to our hand. Alright, this. so this is big for us. This is going to die anyway, and there's very little we can do about it. So, take these. They all get expended, so my, my synergy is not as good as I thought. I think we should take flatter. Spend influence deals two bonus damage. And hits all opponents' arguments. So we want to use this. I think we want to use this here still. So do we want to... It worked. Okay, I'm extremely good. I, I didn't realize it did 5 damage to all opponents' arguments. That's insanely great. <laughs> I don't have any zero cost cards in my discard pile. Okay. So what do we want to do here then? We got four damage coming to our influence. I mean, we could... 
I don't know if we could do anything about that, actually. Let's start. We, we could keep it alive, I think. You know what? Maybe we should keep it alive, then. Let's, let's apply three composure to it, and it should live with one uh, resolve left. And then we'll just fast talk you. There you go. I, th I think we just got the tempo we needed to stay in front here. So you have given me a debuff, I'm assuming. You stole swift rebuttal. When this argument is dismissed, gain three vulnerability. I'm not going to attack that then. That's, that's my philosophy on that one. I will not attack this. When dismissed, you lose half your resolve. Um, okay. I, in my opinion then, we should dismiss that. Yeah, that was what a what a terrible move on on your part. And then this is not even doing any damage. So where's the damage coming in? We're going to lose our influence. It is what it is. We got two left. I think we go uh we just go straight for the resolve play here. We're going to lose three. Actually, we're going to lose two cuz we have some extra composure. Um and our influence is going to be gone, but we should be able to pretty much lethal you. We are vulnerable. All resolve loss is increased by one. Oh no. I'm like, we, we don't have enough to finish the job? I just, I, I think in this case, here's what we want to do. We take the, the threaten, and we just uh, do lethal damage. Look at that. We succeeded, and it wasn't even that bad, honestly. Spend one influence to deal an additional four damage. Draw two cards and upgrade them for this negotiation. Or gain two influence. Uh, we, are we already have this, and I think this is good, but maybe I overrated it originally. This for direct damage seems pretty good, but I gotta admit, this is kind of interesting as well. It's an uncommon. Let's do it's more interesting. Fine, I'll give Gura one last chance. If he disappoints me again, I will have him fed to the Crayotes. Oh, thank Hesh, I won't waste this chance. Gura loves you. He has given me an active boon. At the start of each battle, gain four defense and two temporary power. I suppose I'll take you to the market now, Grifter. All right. So I think that's a good episode one here to kind of set the foundation of what's happening in Grifflands. I think we've we've shown off a lot of what makes the game so interesting. We had a little combat, which went very well. We had a little negotiation, which was a little bit tougher for us to wrap our head around. But once we got it, it allowed for some very interesting uh, gameplay mechanics and some synergies you don't see out of other deck builders. Again, this is a sponsored series. We got six more episodes coming out every single day. At the same time, it is sponsored by Clay. Thank you so much. And also some, some local civic pride for a fellow from one Vancouverite to a team of uh, Vancouverites as well. Um, you can check out the link in the video description below. Please do if you're interested in picking up the game for yourself. It's currently available in alpha. If you click that link, it'll take you to the store page and you can pick it up for yourself. One of a kind deck builder. Very polished for early access. And as you can see, very interesting and engaging already. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the episode and I'll see you next time. See ya!